Chapter 41, Battling the Deep Otter Venom Python Within the pool the Deep Otter Venom Python caused huge waves and ripples as it swam towards Lisa with a terrifying aura. It became harder for Lisa to escape the more frenetic she got in the distance between the two had already shortened to 20 or so meters. Fanny had already reached the banks of the pool when she paid no heed to anything as she splashed through the water rushing quickly towards Lisa like a mermaid. Han Shao's speed was even faster. It was like he met no resisting drag in the water as he sped towards Fanny like lightning. All of Han Shao's bodily functions had far surpassed an ordinary person's since he started practicing magic. When Han Shao gave it his all he immediately demonstrated an incredible energy. He had already arrived when Fanny was approaching Lisa. He reached out with both hands without further ado grabbing Lisa with one and Fanny's waist with the other as he quickly said let's go. He had no time or spare thought to feel the smooth tenderness of Lisa and Fanny's bodies at the moment. His only thought under the panicked circumstances was to quickly vacate the area. His two legs quickly moved through the water like swimming fish. Add to that Fanny's forceful arms and legs and the three entwined around each other and swam for the banks of the pool regardless of anything else. Except if it's only been Han Shao he may have really been able to shake off the pursuit from the deep water venom python. But his speed was greatly affected by the addition of Fanny and Lisa and it was hard to resume his prior speed. They could only watch as the deep water venom python grew closer. Lisa's screams and sobs hadn't stopped for a moment. Even Fanny was powerless in this moment and her face was filled with shock and desperation. In the pool even summoning dark creatures to do battle wouldn't be much use. The level 3D Deep Otter Venom Python had uncommonly thick snake skin. Any ordinary necromancy magic would be unable to stop it. They wouldn't be able to kill the Deep Otter Venom Python with one stroke if they stopped to chant a spell and they were sure to be tangled up by it and then be eaten without a doubt. Wah wah. What to do what to do? Are we going to be eaten by it? Lisa sobbed frantically as her two hands slapped the surface of the water with decreasing strength. Fanny also didn't know what to do and could just watch the Deep Otter Venom Python approach ever closer. She couldn't find a way to hide or escape and could only swim death defyingly. A resolute expression appeared on Han Shao's face after a moment of hesitation. He grabbed Lisa's right arm and swung her at with all his strength. Lisa's naked charming body shot out from the water and flew three meters through the air straight for the banks of the pool. The left hand that had been wrapped around Fanny's waist suddenly pressed down on her beautiful buttocks. Han Shao had already pushed out forcefully before she had a chance to scream and he gave the fast swimming Fanny a hand. Her speed abruptly picked up as she shot towards to the banks like a spear. Hurry and go. Han Shao roared explosively and quickly turned his head around facing down the deep water venom python alone. Brian Master Fanny you have to save Brian. Lisa's desolate cry of astonishment sounded out from afar. Hurry and go on shore Lisa. Only then can we help Brian. The look Han Shao's face was cold and harsh at this point. He tightly clenched the dagger in his hands and could only watch as the deep water venom python started tangling around him. Surprisingly Han Shao didn't retreat but moved forward instead. He actually dashed out quickly before the deep water venom python's tail had tangled him and made for the python's head. Han Shao knew that as fast as he could swim in the pool he would still be unable to race against the deep water venom python. Now that it was tightly against him wanting to pay attention to nothing else and just seek to escape would be a death sentence. The python skin and flesh were durable and strong with soft skin and flesh only around its neck. Close combat was the only way to get out of this alive. The deep water venom python most likely didn't anticipate Han Shao would attack rather than run and so when the enormous tail came to tangle him it only swung around in a rather large arc but didn't touch Han Shao. The dark green eyes flashed as the python seemed to jeer at Han Shao's ignorance. A mist of dark green smoke sprayed out directly toward Han Shao from its heavily fanged bloodthirsty mouth as it lifted its neck. Brian be careful of the smoke it sprays. The smoke has a slow paralysis toxin and will cause your body to stiffen up and finally become immobile. Fanny called out loudly at this moment to remind Han Shao 
O to be careful of the dark green poison mist that the python was spitting out. Han Sha O startled in horrified shock as his quickly moving body held a breath and hastily dived into the waters. He used the pool's clear waters to discern where the python was and rushed in that direction. Avoiding a swing of the python's tail again halfway through Han Sha O directly traveled to the area beneath the python's neck. Han Sha O's body and the dagger in his hand thrust out through the water at the same time and the dagger shone with a cold light as it traced a silver line through the moonlit sky stabbing fiercely towards the soft flesh and the python's neck. The dagger sank up to the hilt with a puncturing sound and blood splurted out afterwards. It was accompanied by a ghastly wail from the deep water venom python as it twisted its neck. Its enormous body started twisting and turning crazily as well. Han Sha O was taken aback and quickly yanked out the dagger pressing down his right palm onto its neck. The red flame of the mystical glacial spell fire flashed once and it landed into the python's neck in the blink of an eye. The python became even more berserk after being attacked by the glacial mystical spell fire and its desolate wails rang continuously. A ball of dark green smoke had started spreading toward Han Shu before he had time to react. Strands of strange air substance filtered into Han Sha O's body through his pores. He felt his entire body suddenly go weak and numb and even the dagger became as heavy as a thousand times. Oh my gosh Brian's been hit by the poison mist. What should we do Master Fanny what should we do? Lisa had already reached the shores of the pool when she saw Han Sha O get sprayed. She called out loudly in great haste. The sound of Fanny chanting a spell suddenly rang out at this time. Oh endless darkness turn into destructive bone spears and destroy according to my will bone spears. Three cuttingly sharp bone spears materialized out of thin air and sped with a whooshing sound towards the python thrashing madly within the pool. Fanny's bone spear spell was indeed uncommon. The three bone spears all hit their target with two of them embedding themselves into the python's forehead causing two flowers of blood to blossom. The last spear landed in the python's mouth the horrifyingly fanged mouth that had been about to swallow Han Sha O. Oh. The spear broke off a few of its sharp teeth causing the python's enormous mouth to rear backwards. At this moment the magical yuan within Han Sha O's oh body churned madly and the sore numbing feeling vanished immediately without a trace wherever the magical yu on circulated too. Previously leaden and lethargic Han Sha O oh regained his energy and quickly moved next to the python after its head was rearing from Fanny's bone spears. The dagger in his hand stabbed downwards twice like lightning and then he swam like the devil was behind him and made for the shore. The deep water venom python suddenly gave a miserable mournful roar as it roiled the waters of the pool so that waves and froth formed. When its head appeared again Fanny and Lisa could see that its two dark green pupils were all leaking viscous fresh blood. Oh my gosh, Brian can still move and he's blinded the deep water venom python. Hey hey ha ha. Lisa was hollering and hopping up on the shore with the panic and whimpering of the previous second miraculously turning into excited squeals. However, Due to the python's wild frenzy its enormous tail thrashed chaotically and just so happened to whip Han Sha O. Oh. Han Sha O oh had been moving quickly when his body flew through the air towards the shore after he'd been hit. At the same time Fanny continuously cast necromancy magic aiming for the weak spots of the python's beautiful eyes and neck areas. Having lost its vision the python was hard pressed to evade Fanny's attacks. The vicious wound on its neck and its eyes were repeatedly pierced by the bone spears and it raised an increasingly loud uproar within the pool. But judging from its appearance it was steadily losing its strength. Under its berserk frenzy the python didn't seem to realize that it should escape at this moment but rather followed the sounds and drew closer to the shore as if wishing to eat its attackers regardless of all costs. But as its wounds grew bigger the frenetic deep water venom python became drained of its vigor and lost its luster. The python finally fell down listlessly and Han Sha O's body slowly floated up to the surface of the water for the first time after he'd fallen in. The clothing around his chest and stomach had ripped apart in many places and his right cheek was a fiery red. He'd seemed to have been injured by the python's tail whip. Lisa had been shouting excitedly and Fanny had been continuously casting magic when they both exclaimed in shock and abruptly swam towards the center of the pool paying no heed to the naked state of their bodies. The two moved quickly and hastily pulled Han Sha O oh up onto shore. Han Sha O's oh lower abdomen was distended and his cheeks puffed out with water leaking out the sides of his mouth. It had seemed that he drank quite a 
bit of the pool, Fanny knew a thing or two about rescue measures and immediately placed both of her slender jade hands on Tahansha O's chest. She repeated exerted force and compressed downward seeking to expel the pool water that Hansha O had swallowed. Lisa did the same and large mouthfuls of pool water were expelled from Hansha O's mouth under their combined efforts. Why isn't Brian waking up yet? Lisa's face was anxious after a while and she looked at Hansha O with worry. Maybe because he's drank too much water and the area around his throat is already blocked. Why don't you try to breath for him? Fanny looked at Lisa and made this proposal after a bit of thought. Lisa blushed and glanced at Fanny. Master Fanny I don't really know how why don't you do it? Fanny halted for a moment and creased her brow with thought. She grit her teeth with resolution and said Brian saved our lives. Forget it I'll try for him. Fanny bent down as soon as she'd finished talking and her charming cheeks a path of charming embarrassed red moved her delicious red lips toward Han Sha Oh. Han Sha Oh had actually woken up a long time ago and patiently held his peace until this moment. His heart thumping loudly and even feeling Fanny's smooth and tender arms on his chest Han Sha Oh's heart was mad with glee. A wisp of light fragrance accompanied the creamy sensation reflecting directly into Han Sha O's mind. Fanny's sweet smelling tongue darted out to separate Han Sha O's teeth as the two noses touched and lips locked firmly together. Fanny started helping Han Sha O breath. A marvelous soul stealing feeling immediately spread through Han Sha O's entire nervous system. Han Sha O only felt that this time's adventures had finally been worth the while and was completely unwilling to wake up. He cared carefully savored this moment of incredibly wondrous sensations. Fanny sucked in one breath raised her head to expel it paused and had been about to continue when her clear eyes absent-mindedly took in the strange little tent that had been erected between Han Sha O's legs. Fanny was stunned blanked for a moment and abruptly recollected herself. She gave a high-pitched scream and placed her jade hands around Han Sha O's neck violently shaking him. She cursed loudly utterly discomfited and exasperated damn it Brian I'm going to kill you. Chapter 42, Directed a Small Tent A. Blur Black, Han Sha O spat out mouthfuls of water as his face turned beet red. He hastily moved Fanny's clenched hands away from neck still not sure what was going on. He hurriedly said with a wry face Master Fanny what are you doing? I'm already like this. Can't you be more gentle? Han Sha O's eyes suddenly bugged out after saying that and he stared fixedly at Fanny and Lisa in front of him. Their upper bodies were basically completely naked. The pure snow white expanse were revealed entirely. Fanny's beautiful twin peaks and Lisa's initially budding breasts were thus unabashedly utterly exposed to Han Sha O's eyes at close quarters. Dripping wet thin lingerie as thin as cicada's wings covered the two's most vital area on the lower body. Although he was unable to fully see through the tantalizing almost translucent temptation was even more fatal. Han Sha O's brother had been about to droop down in the shock of being choked but it now resolutely erected itself again. I Brian you're finally awake. A hey, master Fanny why are you treating him like this? Off on the side lead. Lisa was equally perplexed and she quickly walked over. Look at his lower body. If he'd really fainted why would his lower body have a reaction? Fanny was irate and spoke to Lisa with a reddened face. She immediately retaliated by randomly pinching and twisting Han Sha O as she cursed in a low voice. Han Sha O was immediately dumbfounded by Fanny's words as his eyes still roved fixedly over the two bodies. Sudden brilliance struck him and he immediately argued disregarding whether or not his logic was correct. I was hit by the python's venom just now and my entire body went stiff and listless. My lower body was stiff too. How can this be my fault? After he'd spoken Fanny and Lisa looked at each other and suddenly realized that they were still naked. They exclaimed in surprise and screamed shrilly. Shut up. Stop making excuses. I've never heard of anyone with a stiffened lower body after being hit by the deep water venom python poison mist. Ooh, close your eyes and don't you dare peek. Lisa let's hurry and put our clothes back on before we deal with him. Fanny humped angrily and hurriedly vacated the scene screaming along with Lisa. Han Sha O immediately shut his mouth and his beady eyes quickly opened when both had turned their backs to rove greedily over Fanny's well-rounded and purred bottom. After a moment a fully dressed Fanny 
and Lisa walked furiously over from the distance with both of their cheeks burning red. Fanny sized up Hansha O oh, with a darkened face snorting coldly after a while why did you appear here so coincidentally, A. Eh? I came to collect firewood and happened to hear your screams. That's why I appeared here to save you without paying attention to anything else. Master Fanny I'm hurt and I didn't mean to look at you guys. I'm stiff all over and can't move. The python's tail also whipped me from my chest to my right cheek and it hurts an incredible amount right now. This was all to save you too. Han Sha Oh said with a pinched face as he lay there on his back his entire body as stiff as a wooden doll with only his mouth and pair of eyes being able to move. Master Fanny although Brian is indeed suspicious but he's just saved our lives and become like this because of that. Can you let him go? Lisa looked at Han Sha Oh from afar and flung him a vicious eye roll when she saw that his lower body was still firmly stiff. She spat lightly and only then begged for mercy on his behalf. Lisa? I've been violated by him. Fanny glared at Han Sha Oh and spoke hurriedly when she saw that Lisa was begging for leniency for him. We're the only ones that know of this. I won't say anything. Brian certainly won't say anything so you can just pretend that nothing happened. A he's also seen my body. Although I hate him too we can't very well kill him. He almost lost his life because of us just now. Lisa blinked for a moment and finally responded to Fanny Riley after thinking for a moment. I didn't see anything I didn't see anything just now I promise. Master Fanny please don't kill me. Han Sha Oh's face was full of panic as his eyes moved rapidly spitting out a string of crazy talk from his mouth. Shut up. Fanny shouted irately. This expression was replaced by resignation and she abruptly stomped her foot after thinking for a while. She gritted her teeth. This isn't over yet. You're injured so I'll let you go for now but I'll settle this with you sooner or later. We have finished addressing last time's matter when you've... A. Nothing. Fanny suddenly realized that she'd almost let things slip halfway through. Seeing that Lisa was looking at her with a look of suspicion she hurriedly changed the topic to cover up her slip. Master Fanny you don't mean? Lisa looked at Fanny oddly and asked. No. Fanny immediately huffily interrupted Lisa's words and then laughed charmingly and said gently Brian kept making mischief in last time's experiment that's why I said I'll settle last time's matter with him. Don't think the wrong thoughts. Isn't this right Brian? His eyes moving rapidly Han Sha Oh hastened to agree yes yes that's right. A hey Lisa you watch Brian for now. The deep water venom python is already dead I'm going to go extract the core from it. Ha this is a level 3 magical creature core. We'll be able to walk and talk proudly when we return. Fanny was a bit afraid to continue to remain here afraid that she would let something slip again. She hurriedly walked away like she was escaping something. She swam into the lake again but this time she didn't undress. After Fanny had left Lisa approached Han Sha Oh and sighed lightly saying lowly Brian who would have thought that you would be so silly. I know that your death defying battle with the python this time was all for me. I only half believed your words in the trap but now after this event I believe leave you completely. Brian I'm actually a bad girl and not worth your effort. Han Sha Oh. Lisa saw Han Sha Oh stand there dumbfounded and thought that she had correctly guessed Han Sha Oh's inner thoughts. She shook her head and clenched her teeth. Brian give up on me while it's still early. We're really not suited for each other because the gap between our status and position is simply too great. My family would never approve a relationship between us. I'm sorry Brian. Han Sha Oh. Brian what's wrong why aren't you talking? Are you sad? Lisa maintained a knowing look on her face as she spoke frantically and continued to think that she was being a heartless person. Han Sha Oh didn't know whether to laugh or cry. As he watched Lisa continued to pay no attention to anything other than herself and carry on speaking those conceited words he really didn't have to respond. He finally settled for being in a daze for a while and then shouting in pain stop talking. After he paused Han Sha Oh that Lisa had been so severely frightened. He hastily sighed and spoke with a face of desolation I understand in my heart. I just wish to look at you from afar and won't bring you any troubles. Liking someone means that one shouldn't weigh her down and should wholeheartedly consider all matters for her. Lisa you don't have to mind really. I will take care of myself and silently wish you the best. 
Han Shao had heard these words from a third-rate soap opera before and he even gave himself goosebumps upon saying them. He thought he was really being a bit too sinister and shameless. I've never heard anyone say such nice things Wawa. I'm sorry Brian. Contrary to Han Shao's expectations Lisa actually burst out in low sobs after she heard his words. Her tears flowed down with that pause. It had seemed that she'd been greatly moved to pieces by his words. Fanny returned dripping wet from the pool at this time. When she heard Lisa crying Fanny's face changed as she glared viciously at Han Shao. She said Brian haven't you bullied us enough? Wawa. Master Fanny it has nothing to do with Brian. I was just a bit scared after recalling what had happened just now. It had nothing to do with him really. Lisa hastily wiped away her tears forced a smile onto her face and explained when she heard Fanny berate Han Shao. Looking at Lisa in confusion and then looking at Han Shao who hadn't moved an inch and was still lying there completely frozen Fanny snorted lightly and said he wouldn't dare bully you anymore. Fanny's clothes were tightly plastered to her perfect body as she'd emerged from the lake. Although nothing could be seen those vivacious curves were still a feast for Han Shao's eyes. He tutted in appreciation inwardly. Fanny not only possessed beautiful and striking features but her body was a crime of utmost temptation. This is a bit odd the deep otter venom python was burned to a soggy mess from its neck to its head. I wonder what happened? It looks like this python died so quickly not because of my magic but because of the burnt mess within its head which is weird because my bone magic doesn't have the amazing effect of making someone's body burned up from the inside. What is going on Brian? Fanny sized up Han Shu and asked oddly. Laughing dryly Han Sha Oh said hastily who knows? I only stabbed it a few times and don't have the kind of magic or fighting aura for it to burn up from inside. It's no use looking at me. Is that really the case? Why do I think you're very suspicious? Fanny frowned and her beautiful eyes sized up Han Sha Oh as she spoke with a voice thick with suspicion. A whatever you want to think. I'd love to have such wonderful magic and fighting aura though but too bad I just don't have the strength. Han Shao laughed loudly and said with a bit of a self-deprecating tone. The magic that he was practicing was something that shouldn't exist in this world. This was a secret that he would never tell anyone else even under pain of death. Master Fanny you must be thinking too much or saw incorrectly. Your eyes don't work too well sometimes. Brian just saved us so why would he lie to us? Besides if he was so strong he would have long since stopped being an errand slave. Perhaps. Fanny smiled slightly nodded her head and then said gleefully, I've got the magical creature core. Come we can go back to the tents now. This swim was quite thrilling but we made out like bandits by getting our hands on a level 3 core. Brian can you move now? Do you want me to get some of the male students to carry you back? Lisa looked at Han Shao and asked with some worry. According to my knowledge the poison mist of the deep water venom python only temporarily paralyzes enemies in order to facilitate eating them later. It's been so long. Brian you should be fine by now. Fanny huffed angrily and rolled her eyes at Han Shao in a bad temper speaking with a cold expression. Han Shao exclaimed in surprise upon hearing her words. Ah that's so true. I can move fully now. Let's hurry and go back. Lisa started then looked at Han Shao and also spoke with a bit of anger. Brian you could move a long time ago right? Han Shao spoke seriously without a trace of awkwardness. No no I only knew I could move after I heard Master Fanny's words. Let's go. Let's go. They'll be worried if we're any later. He abruptly stood up after speaking without waiting for Fanny and Lisa's responses. He walked speedily and headed straight to where the students had pitched their tents. Damn it he's definitely been pretending all along. I've found out by just testing him. Brian stop right there. You haven't heard the end of this. Fanny was infuriated and she chased after Han Shao pulling Lisa along in her wake. Chapter 43 Reborn Han Shao was all the way back and suddenly detected that Jean hadn't gone to bed yet when he returned to the campground. He was sitting outside his tent instead bored to death. Hey Brian, have you seen Fanny or Lisa? Jean immediately stood up and asked when he heard Han Shao's footsteps. Nodding Han Shao said faintly I did. Master Fanny and Lisa will be back shortly. Master Jean why haven't you gone to sleep yet? Oh because Clark suddenly left for some business. He asked me to give Fanny his apologies. Ha that Clark left without giving a reason. How baffling. Han Shao's thoughts raced after hearing Jean's words and he immediately understood that Clark must have left 
left abruptly because he knew that he would be unable to explain his actions for bumping into and angering Fanny and Lisa at the pool. I see. Master Jean I still need to collect a few things from nearby. When Master Fanny and Lisa return please tell them that I'll return at daybreak. Han Sha O quickly headed south after he'd spoken not paying attention to whether Jean had agreed to pass along his message or not. He vanished without a trace in the blink of an eye. Although Han Sha O's body wasn't stiff and drained of energy he was still feeling the effects of the python's tail whip. His body was truly injured and he knew that Fanny and Lisa were bound to nag him for a while when they returned. This way he'd be unable to use his magical yu on to repair his body. He therefore decided to temporarily avoid the situation and wait until morning. Their tempers would mostly be mollified by then and there shouldn't be anything major by that time. There was a towering tree to the south with a thick branch heavily forested with twigs and leaves about 10 meters from the ground. Han Sha O oh sat down Indian style and was deep in concentration coalescing the magical Yu on to repeatedly strengthen his body. Time flew by unknowingly and the slight aches in Han Sha O's oh body faded away beneath the circulation of the magical Yu on. Every inch of skin flesh tendon and bone in his body felt like it was filled with surging strength. Han Sha O oh had sank into the passive demonic mental state when a faint sliver of pain started emanating from his mind and gradually spread throughout his entire body. A sudden onslaught of pain accompanied it as an agony ten times stronger than that pain roared to life and caused Han Sha O oh to immediately cry out. Explosive pillapula sounds rang out from within his body accompanying his pain-filled drawers. Faint murky strands of air started rising from Han Sha O's oh pores along with these sounds and layers of ripples swam along the surface of his body as if someone had thrown a rock into water. When his pores had finished emitting the murky air and harmful matter within his body a misty cloud of black splendor faintly surrounded his body. This situation sustained for who knew how long. Han Sha O oh only felt the pain all over his body suddenly vanished without a trace and he dropped down from the 10 meter high branch with a sharp crack. His body was scarily agile and nimble. Success. He had finally successfully broken through the first demonic solid realm. From now on his body had been reborn. Whether it was strength pliability or toughness his body now far outstripped that of ordinary people. After surpassing the most basic solid realm Han Sha O's effort in future training would be halved but would be double in effectiveness. A sudden thought struck him and his magical yuan circulated freely meeting no obstructions. Not only could it effortlessly travel throughout his four limbs chest and stomach but the magical yuan could also easily circulate to his head. Han Sha O oh glanced at his naked skin and saw that not even a single scar remained from his previously scar-covered body. His skin and flesh were clean and supple and he could clearly feel that his height had increased another one or two centimeters when he moved his body. He lifted his head to look at the sky and saw that it was still deep night. Han Sha O oh was reveling in the joy of new life in the moment as he continuously circled circulated the magical you on all over his body excitedly feeling out every inch of change. Suddenly Han Sha O's oh mind raced as he remembered the handbag and jade box he carried around with him. Last time he'd used the bizarre object within the jade box to mediate and train his mental strength he had almost had all his mental strength sucked away instead. It was only when the magical you on had flowed into his brain that he had found a way out of danger and emerged with great rewards instead. Now that he had broken through the solid realm Han Sha O oh could freely deploy the magical Yu on at his will and command it to flow to any part of his body including the most difficult to reach part his brain. Recalling the enormous rewards that he'd gained previously Han Sha O oh found it hard to repress the desires in his heart. He immediately sat down crossing his legs and took out the bag he always kept on him. When he opened the box the ball that appeared like an eyeball was still as strange and sinister as he remembered. When he focused his mental strength and slowly started coalescing blessing it into the round ball the same thing that occurred last time happened again. The ball instantly emitted a hazy light green aura and the drop of blood inside gave one a heavy uncomfortable feeling. Han Sha O's mental strength was sucked away like a whale drinking in water and it flowed quickly into the round ball within the jade box. The pain in Han Sha O's mind increased as his mental strength continued to be siphoned away. Finally just when he thought that his mind would explode his thoughts moved and the magical you on pulling in his 
his lower abdomen suddenly flew up into his mind. There was a loud roaring sound in his mind as increased pain caused him to roar out loudly in pain. At the same time his surging mental strength returned with the force of leveling mountains and draining seas instantly filling Han Shao's mind. Han Shao abruptly sank bonelessly to the ground and panted heavily. His entire mind felt groggy and stuffy and this condition maintained itself for a while. He slowly returned to normal and only felt that his mental strength had indeed increased significantly. Han Shao stared involuntarily at the round ball with glee. Suddenly Han Shao saw that strands of green light had started rippling through the ball. These strands of light wove together continuously as if a pin was tracing out a drawing. A picture formed in the midst after a short while. A strange gray castle. Briefly revealed by the green lines it suddenly vanished without a trace leaving only the drop of red in the center flashed continuously as it actually formed the shape of a red arrow. It froze momentarily then pointed south. What did this mean? What did it mean when the arrow pointed south? Han Shao was momentarily dumbfounded as he gazed at the spot of red in the center lost in thought. His thoughts churned madly and finally confirmed one thing. The red arrow within the round ball had delineated a direction like an objective to travel to. He hesitated and gazed at the sky as his curiosity had been thoroughly piqued. He finally grabbed the jade box and quickly ventured south in the direction that the jade box was pointing at. Throughout this entire process Han Shao could feel that the further south he traveled the more he he heard sounds from large magical creatures. Dangers abounded along his way and he was quite wary. His eyes occasionally flicked to the round ball and noticed that the arrow continuously changed direction as if pointing out the correct path for Han Shao. He proceeded in this way for quite a while when the red arrow in the round ball he grasped finally disappeared. The red blood light drop reappeared and the green light emitted from the ball became stronger. Strong magical pulses traveled out from the ball. Han Shao stopped surveying his surroundings and realized that this was a common area filled with weeds, shrubbery and towering trees. An unknown enormous tree with twisted and twined branches was present not too far off and its strange shadow illuminated by moonlight appeared like that of a monstrous creatures on the ground. Han Shao concentrated his attention and suddenly noticed something strange. In other parts of the dark forest sounds from bugs would carry on no matter how quiet it was but upon reaching this place Han Shao realized that this place Place was almost desolately quiet. There wasn't a single insect's call and not a hint of life to be found. Bizarre. Han Shao felt that the entire area was filled with a strange aura hidden under an ordinary exterior. This aura felt familiar and friendly to Han Shao as if he'd long since grown used to some things but upon thinking carefully Han Shao realized that he had no idea what was going on. Just as Han Shao was completely lost and deep in thought the round ball within the jade box suddenly levitated into the air as the ball used the green light on the surface to draw beams of magical lines through the air. Han Shao could feel the strong magical pulses through the air and that they were growing stronger the more the ball's green light shone out. After Han Shao had noticed he suddenly realized that the area bathed in the green light underwent changes that made his eyes bug out and his tongue tied. The weeds and shrubs on the ground would suddenly vanish without a trace whenever the green light touched it to change into dry gray and dusty earth with piles of stark white bones piled on it. The leafy bough towering trees on the side also underwent eerie changes under the green light changing into the skeletons of monstrous dead creatures. If Han Shao's memory served him right those enormous skeletons were the legendary bone dragons the most terrifying kind of dark creature. Death. An empty desolate wilderness morphed into an eternal land of death under the rays of the green light. There was an enormous gray castle half floating in air half buried underground. A few odd sharp spikes encircled the castle as numerous pictures of dark creatures were carved on the castle walls. Han Shao looked on for a while completely gobsmacked. He finally muttered to himself in astonishment, This. Is this the legendary Cemetery of Death? Chapter 44 Cemetery of Death The Cemetery of Death was a legendary sacred ground for necromancers and the lofty hope that the band had held upon traveling to the dark forest. Han Shao fully observed his surroundings connecting it to Fanny's previous descriptions. He could be certain that this was the legendary Cemetery of Death. No wonder Han Shao had vaguely felt something so familiar about this place earlier. This was because Han Shao also practiced necromancy magic. The strong pulses of death magic in this area 
area including the smell given off by the illusioned white bones were all things that Han Sha O were exceedingly familiar with. He gazed all over his surroundings taking everything in. Han Sha O frowned as he thought everyone who has ever seen the cemetery of death has ended up dead. Now that I stand here do I go in or not? The cemetery of death was a place in which mighty necromancers studied necromancy back when this magic was at its peak. All the necromancers had later died and the cemetery of death had vanished without a trace. However, since this cemetery of death had been a place of research for those necromancers some secrets of necromancy must surely exist here. This was a huge temptation for a rookie like Han Sha O oh, someone who had just entered the halls of magic. This forced Han Sha O oh, to seriously consider whether or not to take on this adventure. After a while Han Sha O oh, walked towards the direction of the cemetery and set foot into the piles of star quite bones a firm resolution evident on his face. When he'd taken a few steps forward and set foot into the inner parts of this area the dark green round ball hung high in the air suddenly landed back into the jade box and the green light that bathed the surroundings vanished with a trace. Han Sha O oh started as he looked around him stunned. The outskirts that his eyes had just passed over had changed again. It had been restored to the site that he had first seen when he had arrived. Only the surroundings areas around the cemetery to the ground underneath Han Sha O's oh feet were the same scene of death and gloom. Looking at the round ball ball in his hand Han Sha O oh understood that this ball was a pivotal item to enter the cemetery of death. It seemed to be able to open the doors to the cemetery. The entire cemetery was shrouded by a concealing field. No one would be able to detect anything out of the ordinary if they looked in from the outside nor would this place elicit anyone's attention. However, one would be able to reveal the true nature of the cemetery of death with this round ball and envelop the entire cemetery under a veil of silence and desolation. The star quite bones creaked beneath his feet. The sound suddenly broke through the still and lonely air giving Han Sha O oh the creeps. It was a good thing that he had just successfully broken through the solid realm giving him some courage from who knew where. He actually walked headlong towards the cemetery of death without paying heed to anything else. After a while he finally stood in front of the cemetery. There was a circular moat in front of the door and inky black water flowing in it. A bridge made of black lines and white bones hung in abject loneliness over the moat. Without hesitating Han Sha O's hands tightened around the jade box that held the ball and stepped slightly apprehensively onto the bone bridge slowly walking towards the doors to the cemetery of death. The bridge swayed throwing his body off balance. He didn't know what was in the moat below but a single glance was enough to raise his hair. He somehow felt that whatever was in the still inky black waters of the moat was highly dangerous. When Han Sha O oh walked onto the bridge the round ball within the jade box started emitting the strange green light again. This seemed to be some miraculous medicine for motion sickness as the wobbly bridge stopped swaying as soon as the green light flashed out. The black lines that had once been large gaps in the bridge immediately solidly bridged the space between the bones. Han Sha O oh finally made it to the door. There were skeletons of two enormous evil knights and their steeds in front of the two great gray doors that were made of unknown material. Evil knights were dark creatures that possessed extremely strong battle power. Necromancers who weren't at archmage level shouldn't even entertain the idea of if summoning evil knights. From the large skeletons of the two evil knights in front of the doors and the shape of their battle steeds Han Sha O oh could vaguely tell that these two evil knights were the cream of the crop. There were complicated and detailed magical patterns on the two gray doors. A round slot was present in the center where the two doors intersected. The shape of that slot looked like a key that would open the doors. At this moment the dark green ball that Han Sha O oh clutched in his hand suddenly shot out a beam of green light aiming straight for the round slot in the middle of the doors. Han Sha O's oh thoughts raced as he immediately understood what was going on. He raised the jade box without hesitation and brought the ball closer to the slot slowly inserting it. In the entire process Han Sha O oh took pains to ensure that his hand wouldn't touch the round ball because he understood that this ball was no simple object. He wasn't sure if some undesired changes would occur if skin and flesh touched it so he therefore avoided touching it with his bare hands as much as possible. When the ball had been inserted into the slot a roar sounded out as the doors abruptly opened with a creak. The slot automatically split open with the opening of the doors and the round ball that had been inserted in it remained in the jade box with no changes. Hazy gloom and dust from the inside drifted out accompanying the 
opening of the doors causing Han Sha O to cough a few times before calming himself down and observing what was inside. There was a large hall within the Cemetery of Death and six rooms with closed doors around the hall. The entire hall was quite vast and the ceiling was extremely high. It was about the size of a basketball field and there was a magical matrix in the shape of a large six-pointed star in the center. It was about 80% to 90% similar to the one that Han Sha O had taken from the academy to the city of Zajowski and there were ancient quaint magical pictures drawn in the center. Apart from the six-pointed star matrix the hall was bereft of anything else. There were only a few magical pillars that were supporting the building and a few broken pieces of bone in the corner. There was a thick scent of decay in the air and Han Sha O waited for a while at the door only slowly walking in when he felt that the scent had slowly started dispersing through the open doors. Apart from the six-pointed star matrix there was only the lofty ceiling within the hall plus the six room doors that the matrix points were pointing at. He first looked throughout the hall and didn't come up with anything valuable. Han Sha O then turned his attention to the six rooms with the closed doors. One two three dot Han Shu was still empty handed after he having gone through all six room. From the shape of the six rooms they were merely six warehouses with nothing inside them now. He returned to the Great Hall and started recollecting what Fanny had said last time. Apart from the general outward appearance Han Sha O oh gradually remembered that only a small portion of the Cemetery of Death was revealed above ground. Most of it was buried deep underground and the true secret would surely lie in the depths of the cemetery. Except Han Sha O oh hadn't seen any tunnels or stairs leading down after he'd gone through the Great Hall and six rooms. This greatly befuddled him and he sank into deep thought again. After a while Han Sha O oh still felt that the round ball within his hands was the key. He immediately stood up again and circled the hall again including the six rooms in his inspection. Finally Han Sha O oh discovered another slot in the corner of one of the rooms. He was overjoyed and another set of rumbling sounded out when he inserted the round ball into the slot. A dark tunnel suddenly split open the walls of the room in rows of six silver sticks made from strange material that was neither stone nor wood were laid on the first step of the tunnel. There seemed to be connection points on both ends of each stick as if the six sticks could be assembled. There was only a thin piece of paper apart from the six sticks. On it ancient magical symbols were used to write a few hastily scribbled words. Han Sha O oh took the thin sheet of paper. When he'd carefully read the magical words Han Sha O oh understood that these six sticks could form a diagram with a six-sided star and be used in direct transportation with the magical matrix in the hall. He also clearly understood that if one had insufficient mental strength one would be unable to venture further into the depths. Apart from that Han Sha O oh was unable to obtain any other useful information from the thin sheet of paper. Thinking briefly Han Sha O oh put away the six magical sticks and creased his brow as he started walking down the tunnel. An invisible field suddenly appeared as green light rippled abruptly bouncing him off. Han Sha O oh only felt that his mind hurt abnormally throughout the process and internally reflected that the words on this thin sheet of paper were true. His mental strength must be too weak and was being prevented from descending any further into the depths of the building. Cursing lowly Han Sha O oh stayed in the room and connected the six magical sticks according to the instructions recorded on the paper and formed a six-pointed star on the floor. He then stood in the center of this mini matrix activated it with his mental strength and Han Sha O oh appeared in the large matrix in the center of the hall with a flash of white light. Repeating the same method Han Sha O oh infused the transportation matrix in the hall with his mental strength and returned to the same room after activation appearing within the small six-pointed matrix his brow creasing in deep thought Han Sha O oh understood that he would be unable to enter the tunnel and explore the cemetery of death for the time being. It was a good thing that he had gained the six magical sticks and the round ball that allowed him to conveniently come here no matter where he was. This filled his heart with glee as he'd already started thinking of this place as his secret base. Since he would be temporarily unable to discover the secrets of this place Han Sha O oh had no desire to continue to stay. After thinking for a while he rolled up the six magical sticks and placed them on his back put away the piece of paper into his pocket and walked out of the cemetery of death in the same manner of holding the jade box. When Han Sha O oh had safely walked out he looked back and realized that the scene was the same as when he'd walked in. The growth of tall weeds shrubs and towering trees remained unchanged. His surroundings were still quietly desolate. A small satisfied smile appeared on his face. Han Sha O oh understood that the 
this time's adding to the dark forest had come to an end here. He had stumbled upon the legendary cemetery of death by pure dumb luck. The secrets of this cemetery also belonged to him and no one else including the necromancy students and teachers. Chapter 45 Making a move when he should make one after emerging from the cemetery of death Han Shao returned along his original path but the sky had completely brightened halfway on his journey back. When he returned back to the original camping grounds according to the way in his memory he found that the necromancy students had long since moved on. Just as Han Shao was about to curse loudly he suddenly took in the appearance of his surroundings. He discovered that the ashes in the area with the bonfire didn't look like they were from last night but much more like they had been there for a few days. Han Shao's tent area had been filled with many resources but now nothing remained. Only a few rocks were piled up in a triangular formation. His interest beaked Han Shao quickly walked to the tent area. He took out his dagger and carefully flipped through the center of the stones retrieving a piece of yellow paper after a while. Brian on the second day of your departure we found traces of the two man-eating monsters nearby. We were worried that the man-eating monsters would seek revenge and decided not to wait for you. When you see this note return to the academy along the original way, perhaps we will meet halfway. Hope you're safe and sound Fanny. Fanny had left the note. Han Shao whapped his head after reading it and silently said oh no. Dot after reading the note Han Shao understood that much time must have unknowingly passed by while he he was practicing magic and not merely just today. It looks like the two man-eating monsters had appeared and caused Fanny and the others to panic. Add to that she was already deep in the southern territory of the Dark Forest and without Clark's protection they had no choice but to resign themselves to return along their original path. Currently Han Shao's slave status still had not been resolved and the woman he wanted was still within the Babylon Academy of School and Magic along with some tomes of necromancy magic that he wanted still wanted to learn. He would be unable to leave the academy in the near future. With the six magical sticks Han Shao could come and go from the cemetery of death at his leisure. He could absolutely use the transportation matrix to make the cemetery his personal territory after he returned to the academy. The entire southern portion of the dark forest would be his training fields in the future. Whether it was magical yuan or magic spell training half the amount would lead to double the effectiveness in a place like this. Musing for a while Han Shao followed the instructions left on Fanny's note and followed the original road swiftly moving towards the outskirts of the dark forest. Although he traveled without rest for a day Han Shao actually didn't feel tired at all. Moving through the winding and bumpy paths of the dark forest Han Shao's speed was as fast as lightning like magical creature hunting down its prey. He neared an area of randomly scattered rocks and shrubs around dusk. This was an area where they had camped before. The sounds of metallic clouds ashes traveled to him from afar. Han Shao was startled thinking could it be that Fanny and everyone else are under attack by the man-eating monsters? When he thought of this his speed picked up and he abruptly flew towards the area of rocks and shrubs. Along the way many forest trolls with glistening green skin towering bodies grimacing faces and wielded knives or studded clubs repeatedly attacked Han Shao. He easily evaded all of them. Forest trolls were raised within the dark forest that were mortal enemies with the elves. The elves treated them as marauders of the forest and continuously attacked them. Within the dark forest the forest trolls were even more frightening robbers than the man-eating monsters. Not only did they adhere to a strict code of conduct but they also divided themselves according to methods employed by mankind into warriors hunters and even priests that could use some simple magics. It was said that the forest trolls were evolved from plants and trees. They held high intelligence similar to humans and enjoyed some unique advantages within the dark forest. They leveraged these advantages to wantonly plunder the resources of other races including the cargo of some traveling merchants. They were infamous bandits and robbers like the man-eating monsters. Han Shao listened closely to the sounds of fighting and quickly darted in the direction they came from. Along the way some of the forest troll hunters threw out long spears and they flew towards Han Shao's spine with a whooshing sound. Han Shao's five senses were exceedingly sensitive as he ran. As his ears twitched he changed the direction of his body a few times and easily evaded the long spears that had been thrown. Several forest troll warriors
warriors holding large sharp axes yelled loudly as they rushed toward Han Shao but before they had reached him Han Shao had already agilely dashed past them and continued towards the center of the action. After 10 or so seconds of extremely fast sprinting Han Shao had finally made it to the thick of combat. He saw 10 or so people wielding long swords defending themselves against the forest troll attacks. Their dress clearly signified them as part of a mercenary band. They all looked like they had suffered some sort of injury. There were about 10 or so forest trolls surrounding them. Troll warriors handled the close combat up in the front while about 10 troll hunters continuously threw out long spears. The final five troll priests cast simple healing magics in Fire of the Soul to enhance body durability healing the warriors and hunters injuries while increasing their vitality. Judging from this scene the fight had been going on for a while. The battle strength of the band of roughly 10 humans was also extraordinary but it was a pity that the forest trolls held the strength in numbers and they had missile fighters in the form of the troll hunters as well as the healing type troll priests. The combination of these three matched up against a mercenary band of only warriors. Add to that the forest trolls advantage in strength it was obvious that they held the absolute advantage. A short stocky fatty with a face full of blubber was behind the mercenaries. His yellow bean like little eyes moved swiftly as he cursed loudly. He seemed to be searching for a way out. So it wasn't Fanny and them. Looks like this is nothing to do with me, Han Shao thought as he immediately put the events of this tableau out of his mind. He had no thoughts of joining the fray and helping and was intent on simply bypassing these people and continue on his path to exit the dark forest. However, even though Han Shao had no intention of lending a helping hand these forest trolls didn't seem to want to let him go. A couple particularly strong and fierce troll warriors who were out in the front had already raised their large battle axes and were rushing toward Han Shao. A few sharp spears in flight also accompanied them. Sorry I'm just passing by and will leave immediately. Continue robbing them. It's nothing to do with me. Han Shao didn't want new complications to arise so when he saw the troll warriors rush rushed towards him he yelled loudly and tried to leave and avoid them. Humans are the most devious and evil of all races. Kill him. Standing beside the troll priests on the outside the forest troll leader of this operation suddenly screamed harshly with the common language. Language of humans. Of the continent. The troll warriors had paused briefly upon hearing Han Shao's words but lost their hesitation when hearing their leader's words and came rushing over with axes upraised. Damn it. They were looking for death. Han Shao was also a bit hacked off. He had just evaded the throws of the long spears when the tall bulky troll warriors rushed over with their battle axes. They were obviously planning on also taking care of him along with the others. Wrapping his hand around a long spear beside him Han Shao pulled upwards and grasped the spear in his hand. He didn't wait for the forest troll warriors to get closer before he jumped upwards. The spear in his hand was so fast that it was like lightning piercing through the air. The spear first pierced through the chest of a troll warrior and also strung up the warrior that was close behind it. The two troll warriors only had time to emit two ghastly screams before they died instantly when the spear impaled them. Han Shao randomly grabbed one of the battle axes that one of them had wielded and yelled loudly can't blame me if you come looking for your own deaths. After the matter with the man-eating monsters last time Han Shao was no longer timid nor did he waste time hesitating when it came to killing someone. He also somehow felt vaguely excited. Han Shao knew that mercy or please would be absolutely useless with these bandits and robbers. Only cold and cruel methods would be able to shock and awe them. The more timid and cowardly you were the more they would act without reservation. Therefore Han Shao had acted extremely cruelly just now directly using violent killings to face them. Indeed, after Han Shao had displayed his brutal methods panicked expressions appeared on the glistening green skin of the other four forest trolls that had followed their brethren's charge. They retreated quite a few steps backwards in cowardice. Even the leader of the forest trolls looked at him with some horror and an apprehensive expression appeared on his face brave warrior please rescue me. At this moment the short fatty that the mercenaries shoved to the back for protection suddenly cried out with excitement. He looked at Han Shao with a fervorous expression as if Han Shao was his savior. No interest. Han Shao replied decisively. He picked up the battle axe with a cold snort and prepared to leave. The short fatty immediately lost his calm and cried out wildly upon seeing that Han Shao was about to leave. Brave warrior I am willing to pay you a rich reward if you save me. I promise that you'll be satisfied. 
Han Shao had already taken a few steps forward when he heard those words. He suddenly stopped and turned with a faint smile looking at the fatty. He said noble sir how large of a reward are you willing to give? The fatty was momentarily stunned then hesitated. He grit his teeth and stamped his foot yelling loudly. 50 gold. Sorry please find someone else. Han Shu thought that if it had been before he probably would have been tempted by the 50 golds. Now that he'd entered the dark forest and discovered that his skills were absolutely enough for him to cash when blade wolves by himself he no longer felt that 50 gold was enough for him to take the risk. Fatty grew anxious seeing that Han Sha Oh was about to leave. He yelled out again, 70 at most. Han Sha Oh continued walking forward without even looking back. 80, 100, 120, 150, 200, 200. Exclamation mark the moving figure abruptly stopped. Han Sha Oh suddenly looked back and rushed speedily back. He said all right 200 it is then. I'll eat up the loss and count it as making a friend. Oh my word. 200 golds. You're robbing me just like they are. 200 gold is enough for more than 10 slaves. Damn it get me out of here. Fatty hollered with a look of pain on his face. 